Well hi guys and welcome back once again to Trev's Cooking on a Narrowboat. This one today might be a bit controversial with some of you. I know in some parts of the world what I'm going to cook today probably won't be very well eaten or taken. I'm going to do for you today liver and bacon in a rich onion gravy topped with a vegetable mash. Twist on this one, of course, is the vegetable mash on the top. So, without further ado, let's get cooking. So I have here my ingredients for the mash. I've already prepped the vegetables up. You don't need to watch me prepping vegetables every time I cook them. I put them in water so they don't go brown. I have two potatoes diced up, some swede or rutabaga or whatever you want to call it diced up, and some carrots and parsnips diced up. As you can see, I have about a bowl. These are cereal bowls. Uh, a bowl full of swede, a bowl full of potatoes, and half a bowl of each of parsnip and carrot. Now let's get them cooking. So we have our saucepan here. I'm going to leave the water it's in, and I'm going to start off by cooking the swede, the carrots and potatoes. I'm going to add drop more water so that's their covered. And of course light the stove. I'm going to add some salt to my vegetables. As you know I like to season everything. I think unseasoned vegetables actually are quite disgusting. And it's, I don't know, a teaspoonful. I'm going to let those cook away now until they're almost softened and then when they're getting close we'll add the potatoes. Right now back to the chopping board. On the chopping board I have some lamb's liver. It's uh, just short of 500 grams. It's 499 grams there which I paid all of £1.25 for. I have a 500 gram pack of bacon, which is a middle cut bacon, so you have the streaky and the back on it, which I paid £1.29 for, and three onions, which I don't know, cost probably 20p. So this is quite an inexpensive dish. The potatoes and everything else that was in the um, it's going to make the mash which is their cooking at the moment came in a pack and the pack was 75p and i've used less than half of them so we can probably say 30p there so this whole dish is going to cost us two pounds 54 64 74 less than three pounds for this whole dish so it's very inexpensive but extremely tasty so let's get on and make it. So I'm going to start off by seasoning the liver. And I'm going to gently fry it off first before we make the dish. So I have some plain flour, salt, and pepper. Nothing fancy with the seasoning for this dish. So take a tablespoon and put I don't know, approximately two heap spoonfuls of flour into the bag. Lots of freshly ground black pepper. I like pepper. So 
some Himalayan pink salt. Not too much. Actually, there's a couple of other ingredients I'm gonna add to it as well, which I forgot to mention previously. I'm gonna add, I don't know, quarter of a teaspoonful of garlic granules. You could use fresh, but it doesn't coat very well. It doesn't stick to the liver very well. And I have some mixed herbs and probably about the same quarter of a teaspoonful. Right, so. So seal the bag up. Give it a good shake so it's all mixed up nicely in there. Open our bag back up. And now we're gonna add the liver. Put the bag that side so it's not near the flame of the stove. We'll take our liver. Oh, it's double packed. And I don't want the liver in two bigger pieces. Our vegetables have just come to the boil. I've turned them down and I'm going to put the lid on, let them simmer for a while. And the liver is in fairly large pieces and I want to make them actually slightly smaller. Uh, it's just going to make it easier when serving this dish because it's going to have a topping on it. So you can just not looking for pieces to get even portions out. I'm just uh, dicing it up into yeah, reasonable sized pieces. A lot of it's fairly well chopped up anyway, so this is lamb's liver if I didn't say so already. It's basically the only liver I can really recommend to anybody. So I'm just going to put all that our liver in there. I'm just going to rinse that out before I throw it away or put it into the recycle. Clean my top down. Right, I've just washed my board down, got it nice and clean. Just do a quick wipe off of the paper towel to dry it off a bit. Take our liver in our plastic bag, trying to keep some air in the bag so it makes this easier to do. Seal it up. <coughs> and we're going to coat with our liver. that seasoned flour. And there we go, it's nicely coated. Right, I've just moved the vegetables over to the other side of the gas rink so I can get my skillet frying pan on here which is just warming through. I'm going to take some uh, vegetable oil, whatever this is, some flour oil. Um, we need enough for frying. I'm going to turn the heat up. Was it quite warm? What I'm going to do here is I'm going to brown the liver. I'm not going to cook it. I'm just going to sear it all off and basically brown it a little bit. And here goes. I know it's going to be quite tight in this pan to get it all in, so I'm going to push it up quite tight together. I'm actually putting it in before the pan's really, really hot. The reason being is quite simply, I don't want it splattering hot oil all up my hands. This is a fairly good non-stick pan, so I don't have to worry too much about not having enough oil to fry it properly. So we're just about squeezed in all of the liver. Because it's on a boat, nothing's ever quite even. Uh, either the water tank's full or the diesel tank's full. So the front and the back of the boat, one minute it's dipping one way, one minute it's dipping the next. So you have to move things around sometimes to compensate for that. So we'll let that fry off for a bit. Right, the bay. 
Right, the liver's starting to uh, brown off on the other side now. I'm just going to turn it over. I don't know if the camera's picking that up, but you can obviously just see starting to brown. The flower's browning off. We're going to give it a couple more minutes on the other side as well. You're really good. I guess you could toss this and make it all fall up the right way the other way up. I just don't recommend trying it. Some of these just stuck together, that's okay. They'll break up in the just in a minute. So I've got out my famous casserole dish with no lid. Actually, this is a different one with no lid. I have two of them with the wrong lids. I'm gonna take our liver out and put into the casserole bowl. And we'll leave our pan on there. Bring back in our chopping board and we'll cut some onions. So there we have our three onions chopped up. I'm just going to add a drop more oil to it. I thought there was enough in the pan. I think it needs a drop more, so we're just going to have a drop more. Now the vegetables also will be over here. I'm cooking now, and I'm going to add the potatoes now. So I'm going to put the lid back on there. Whilst the onions are starting to brown off, I'm going to bring in my bacon. As I say, this is middle cut, so it had the streaky and the back bacon on it, and it had the rind on it. I'm not going to throw the rinds away at the moment. I'm going to keep those. And we're going to take our knife and chop the bacon up into pieces. The onions are cooking away here quite nicely. Taking on a little colour. I'm going to actually make my gravy in here with the onions. To my onions, I'm going to add some more flour. I'm going to add a, a dessert tea, a heat dessert teaspoonful. I'm just going to mix that in with the onions. That will soak up the oil and make sort of a roux. I want to cook the flour out a little bit. I'm not going to pre-cook my bacon, so I'm going to add the bacon in with the liver. Back to the onions cooking. Flour should have uh, cooked off a bit now. To that now, I'm going to take two oxo cubes. Oxo cubes are very easy to crumble like stock bouillon cubes. I know the American stock bouillon cubes are like concrete, so you have to dissolve them in water first. Our uh, sauce is coming along here quite nicely, our gravy. Now, of course, you could have used red wine instead of water, but uh, this basically was a peasant dish back in its day. It's cheap to make, and of course, liver was easily available, and most places were able to get hold of bacon. It was a bit of a staple because it's cured and will keep unrefrigerated. If it's cured bacon and not this shop stuff these days, which is injected brine. I 
And of course, adding wine would be more of a French way rather than an English way. Right, that's um, just about ready there now. It will cook out a bit more, but it can do that once it's in back in the casserole and in the oven. So we're back to our dish. We're gonna add that in there. So, turn the gas off, and mix that in. It may need a little more water added to this yet, to, but it will still thicken down, it's not a problem. I didn't want to make it too runny, or too much water in there. I just want it to be covering everything, basically. We're not far off. I'm just gonna drop more, there we go. Let's just make brought it up now to the top covering all the meats. Trying to get the bacon and the onions fairly mixed in evenly amongst the liver. Just gonna check on our vegetables. With a knife, I'm just gonna check to see how soft they are. I think we're good. Right, now in a colander over the sink. I'm gonna drain off the vegetables. Get some of the water drained back in there. I'm gonna put the lid back over the top so you can keep warm. And I'm gonna take these bacon rinds and I'm gonna cut them up into little pieces. So remember this was a peasant dish. Nothing would get wasted. And as they say about the pig, you can eat every part of it, except for the squeak. So we've just chopped all that up there. And we're gonna put that in the pan. And we're gonna fry that off. So we just put all those bacon bits, all that rind, into the pan, which we're now gonna fry off. You may notice I added no oil to the pan. I actually wiped it with a paper towel. I know there's some gravy marks still around it, but that doesn't matter. As I say, it's all going in the same dish. So while that's frying off, we get our veggie tables. So while we have these frying off in the pan, and my potato ricer, obviously you can regularly mash these normal, move them around the other way around because I'm left-handed, and we're gonna Close them into the ricer, like so. I dice them up fairly small, it just makes them easier to handle. What I'm going to do is, with the vegetables, as I mash it, I'm going to add some butter. That's why I kept the, the vegetables hot, so the butter will, will go through the ricer easier. Oops. There we go, we're just going to squeeze them through the ricer. And I'm going to do the same with all of these until I finish doing them. So there we have it, it's all been through the potato ricer. Now I did forget to add some butter to it halfway through, so I've just added a couple of pieces of butter, so I want a bit more butter in it. I'm just gonna now just make sure that butter's mixed in. And I'm using the regular masher for it. And that's looking quite nice. So this mash, it also helps mix it together a bit more. So we have a mash of potatoes, carrots, swede, and parsnip. And you end up with this rather nice coloured concoction. There's the uh, bacon bits just fried away over there. I'm just going to turn those off. So we're bringing back in our liver. I'm just gonna take a spoon and place this around over the top. Now of course you could do all the vegetables separate. But this way, you only have the one dish. and be amazed how good it tastes done this way. I 
at least not want not because remember it's a peasant dish I'll make sure it's all in there and just to spread it out a bit I'm just going to use a fork I to press too hard because it would disappear in the gravy spreading rather than a pushing the gravy will bubble up around the sides of it which will just add to flavour if you want it to brown a little bit more just run the fork across give it sort of a crisscrossy sort of pattern like so I'm just going to take our baking bits now and with a spoon because they're hot I'm just going to spread them across the top like so now the idea of adding the uh, bacon bits actually came from one of my subscribers he's the guy at the end of the credits says Richard and against his name says beer because Richard quite regularly brings me a beer when he's been shopping very kindly too so that's ready for the oven so here goes let's put it in the oven I preheated the oven to gas mark 5 and, and it goes it's all dark it's getting dark it's getting late in the evening so it's a little dark at the moment but uh, it's in the oven and we're going to leave it in the oven for 35 to 40 minutes Well, it's now been 35 minutes and I've just taken out the oven. It's cooked, obviously. It's bubbled up, as I said, over the top, so it seeps into some of that mashed vegetables. The uh, little bits of bacon should have gone crispy on top. Just test a bit. Mmm, yummy. Plate are just warmed in the oven. lovely rich gravy there worse onions mm. as you can see here whilst you was away I wasn't being lazy I've done all my dishes so now we have to try it I'll try a bit of the sauce first just to check it Mm. very rich onions taste are coming through nicely and you can just taste the hint of those herbs I added on the background try some of this mashed vegetables mm. lovely little crunch on the top a few minutes longer in the oven would have made it more crunchy but I didn't overcook it for a couple of reasons main reason being is I can't eat all this in one go so I'm going to be having it for more than one meal so I'll reheat it back in the oven so I don't want to overcook it the second time I reheat it let's try a piece of this liver oh hot mm. lovely and tender beautiful flavour and of course being lamb's liver it's very mild in taste so even if you're not a big fan of liver or you've never tried it before try this dish this is another old english classic oh, there's a bit of bacon there i've got to try some bacon look mm. the flavours Mm. as I was saying never great old English classic peasant food basically but it's amazing what you can make uh, with some cheaper ingredients so it's really really tasty I'm just going to put that down for a moment the last time I said this in a cooking video I got a lot of comments in the 
description of the video. People ask me to cook various things. Well, I may take those into consideration at one point in time, but if you really want me to do something, consider becoming a member or a Patreon. You know, become a member or a Patreon or make a PayPal donation. A couple of quid and you'll be in. It just helps me purchase the ingredients to make that recipe. I know I'm going to eat it, but uh, every little helps, of course, and some things I may not have cooked otherwise. That leads me to say, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget, if you've not already subscribed, please subscribe. And even if you are already subscribed, make sure you click the bell icon. That way, YouTube will notify you every time I upload a new video. I know otherwise it's a bit hit and miss. And as I said before, if you really want to help the channel, consider becoming a Patreon, a channel member, or make a PayPal donation. That just leaves me to say, thank you very much for watching. Trevor out.